We're going to pray in a little bit for people that have needs because I just believe anytime we get together in this season, it is a time when God can heal and God does heal. But we're praying specifically, we're fasting for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you why. This is absolutely the key to everything else. If we're filled with the Spirit, if we're full of the Spirit, it's going to allow God to work in us and through us in the lives of other people in a way that without that, we, He never could. It's going to make a difference in your life. It's going to change your life. For some of you, you would say, I've been filled with the Spirit a long time. And let me just tell you this, there is more. God wants to do more in your life. God wants to give you a greater infilling of the Holy Spirit. God wants to take you from glory to glory to glory, right? That's what he wants to do. In Luke chapter 24 and verse 49, Jesus said, it's the end of the Gospel of Luke. Luke, you remember, writes the book of Acts. But Jesus said, Behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. What is the baptism in the Spirit like? It is like suddenly God has blanketed you with a power that is heavenly. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's being clothed with power. Then we know this in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. On one occasion, while he, that Jesus, was eating with them, remember, he had 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension. He's taking that time. He's teaching the disciples. He's explaining to them the kingdom of God. But here, Luke tells us, on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised what you've heard me speak about. So in Luke's gospel, you have Jesus saying, listen, you need to wait till you're clothed on with power. In Acts, on another occasion, he's telling them again, this is on the heart of the Lord because the Lord wants to see all of us living supernaturally powerful lives. He wants that for you. It's available to everybody. It's not just for preachers. It's for everybody. And when the Holy Spirit comes on you, it will absolutely change your life. He says, wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. How important is the gift of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if Jesus says, listen, don't do anything till you get this? I mean, that is, that is a startling statement. Up to this point, he sent them out. He's given them authority. But now he says, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to be up in heaven, and you need divine power. I'm not going to be with you. I'm going to be in heaven. But I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to be with you. He's going to be upon you, and he's going to empower you. Then he says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 5, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As I've been reading that this week, I've been thinking about this phrase, in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I just feel a, a quickening from the Spirit that that word is for everybody who desires it. That word is for everybody who's never received it. That word is for everybody who's been filled but needs to be refilled in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit there's something about embracing the word of God with faith and saying that's me I believe this is a promise for hundreds of people at James River probably thousands if you're watching online it's a promise for you in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. I just believe that's a word from the Lord for the church. You say, why do we need it? Well, again, Acts 1.8, but you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Dunamis, we get our word dynamite from it. Dynamic, you'll have a, you'll have a new dynamic. You'll have that, that word dunamis used 10 times in the book of Acts. Eight times it has to do with miraculous power, supernatural power, mighty power, miracle working power. You'll receive power, and that power is going to enable you to do two things. It's going to enable you to supernaturally be bold in witnessing the people around you. 
so that you're willing, you're willing to talk to anyone, anywhere, anytime about the Lord just on the spot. You don't have to wait for the perfect time, the perfect moment. The Spirit may direct you to do that, but that's not what you're thinking. You're thinking, I, I, I need to tell people about Jesus. And then you're, you're on it. You're not thinking about what will they think about me. You're not thinking about, you know, will that, will that hurt me? Or will they, will they be mad at me? Or will I look stupid or foolish? Or I won't know what to, you're not thinking about any of that. Because when you're full of the Holy Spirit with supernatural boldness, you just go out and you just tell them what's on your mind. And what's on your mind is what the Spirit of God has put there. I mean, that's the kind of boldness we're talking about. If you don't have that, then you need this. I don't care if you speak in tongues, you need this. Because I think there's a lot of people who stopped when they started with their prayer language and didn't keep on pressing on to the whole thing God has. Hey, thank God for the prayer language we need it. It's helpful, it's wonderful. But at the same time, what you want is power. Power, and if you don't have power, that enables you to speak supernaturally with boldness to people, then you haven't got what Jesus was worried about, what he cared about, what he wanted you to have. Power that not only gives us that kind of boldness, but power that brings about miracles. I mean, Acts 3, 12, think of it. When Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? It wasn't their power, it was his power. It's the kind of power that will take a person who's never walked for over 40 years and bring them to their feet, and not only to their feet, but have them leaping and dancing and jumping up and down. That's power. In Acts chapter 6, can't wait till we get there. Now, Stephan, a man full of God's grace and power, he's full of it in a good way. He's full of power. He's, he's got power. It's just bubbling out of him. What happens? He does great signs and wonders, great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. He does mega wonders, not just wonders, mega wonders among the people. Why? Because he's got this power. What will it do when the Holy Spirit baptizes you? There will be a supernatural power that you will have that will demonstrate itself in signs and wonders as you pray for people, as you, as you in the name of Jesus, command healing in Jesus' name in their life. It's a powerful thing. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and dunamis. Power and how we went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. This is a power greater than the devil's power. This is a power that breaks the power of the devil. This is a power that sets people free. This is a power that changes people. I'm gonna ask the worship team to come because we don't need to take a lot of extra time with this. I think you've heard it on Sunday. You know it's true. And I just believe God wants to fill people full of the Holy Ghost and fire. I got a great testimony this week. It's from somebody I, we were praying down in the altar last Wednesday night, and she was one of the people. Here's what she writes. Pastor touched my forehead and began praying. I felt like I needed to say something I didn't understand. So right then at that moment, and I can remember praying for her and thinking she's gonna be baptized in the spirit, but here's what's happening. I felt like I needed to say something I didn't understand, but I couldn't overcome the doubt in my mind. That's an interesting statement. I mean, that is exactly what it seemed was happening. I, she said, Pastor John looked at me and said, you're this close, because I did. I said, you are this close. We had a, we had a pastor on staff, uh, his, his, uh, wife, he's passed away, but his wife and his daughter attend here, Pastor Snavely, some of you remember him, and John was full of just sage wisdom, and uh, he said, you know, it, it, and through the years praying for people to receive the Spirit, there's times when you just know God's done everything he's, he's going to do. In other words, he can't do any more, the Spirit's right there ready to flow through the person, but it takes faith. Yeah, that's good, Pastor. You got you to reach out and take hold of it. 
You got to sense, she sensed, hey, I knew I was supposed to speak something I didn't understand, but I had doubt, I, there was this battle, and I was just kind of in this struggle zone with that. Anyway, she goes on to say, he went on praying for others, but had any from the worship team come pray with me. I stayed until the worship band packed up, continued worshiping, seeking the Lord. I knew something had happened, but I didn't feel like I'd received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I was discouraged. I saw Annie on my way out. She encouraged me that it could happen any time tonight or even when I drive out of the parking lot. I woke up determined to continue to fast. I knew I had the joy from the Lord and I did feel lighter. After breakfast, I was speaking to my husband and I instantly felt like something had happened in my heart, almost as if the Lord had tickled it with a feather. I felt so joyful, but I continued to do what I had to do throughout the day, all the while fasting. Around 6.25 p.m. on Thursday, I was praying during my time of fasting. I began to speak and pray over the list of things I wanted the Lord to answer during my fast. Listen, if you wanna speak in the prayer language, if you wanna speak in tongues, if you want the baptism in the Holy Spirit, there comes a point where you gotta speak. When you're, you, there's times you're praying for people and they're not talking. God's not gonna make you talk. He's not gonna move your lips. You know, you've, you've got to speak. And there's a, there's a, a point where you're, you're by faith stepping into it. It just, just is what it is. If you want to drink deeply of the Spirit, you've got to swallow. Yeah. If you're going to drink the living water, you've got to swallow it. If you, want to, if you want to be baptized in the Spirit, the best way is to be praying and just vocalizing your prayer and praise to the Lord. That's what she's doing here. She said, I was almost at the bottom of the things of my paper, reading aloud and praying, when I heard something I couldn't recognize, I continued to pray and instantly knew I was speaking in tongues. I stopped in my tracks, began to bawl my eyes out. I couldn't believe it was real. The same God who poured out his spirit and tongues of fire on the disciples was now pouring it out on me. For the past three days, I've been speaking in tongues constantly during my prayer time. She says, I'll begin to pray out loud and it will completely take over. At times, I'll even sing a song to the Lord in my spirit language. I feel more joy than I could ever contain or humanly express with words. I'm completely healed of my anxiety and depression. I feel on fire from the Holy Spirit with intimacy in my walk with the Lord. I can't stop praying. And when my timer goes off, I sometimes reset it to add another 30 minutes because it doesn't seem I've had enough time with him. Then she adds this, I truly believe I had to rebuke the spirit of unbelief, doubt, and the spiritual sickness I felt to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm forever changed and all glory to Jesus, right? That's so good, isn't it? Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we wanna connect with you on our online family. You can just click the link next to me to connect with us. As well, we would love if you would subscribe to the YouTube channel today and press that bell for notifications. You will be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content that helps you stay up to date with everything that's happening at James River Church. We hope you have a great day today and we'd love for you to join our live Sunday services every Sunday and Wednesday. Thank you again for watching. God bless.